Being able to upload files and use them afterward is something we need in various types of applications. Sometimes this is not a trivial task to accomplish, but that's why we are going to show you one way that is both easy to implement and understand. So, uploading files to the ASP.NET Core Web API server and then using them in an Angular client application is going to be the main goal of this video. We'll stick to images, but the logic is the same for other file types as well, so feel free to play around a bit. We've created a starter project for both Web API and Angular and we strongly recommend to download them by visiting our article about this topic. You can find the link to the blog in the description below the video. Let's start by opening the Upload Files Server project, which you can find in the Start Project folder. We use the SQL database to store our data. So, to create that database, we need to run the update database command in the Package Manager console window. By doing this, our migrations will be executed and the database with the required table will be created. The next step is to create a new folder Resources and inside it a new Images folder. Now we have to create a new API controller file in the Controllers folder and name it Upload Controller. Let's modify this file by adding a new action that will be responsible for the upload logic. We use a POST action for the upload related logic and disable the request size limit as well. Of course, we need the action itself, so let's create it with the try catch block inside. Inside the try block, we extract the file from the request, create a folder name for our files and provide the path where the file will be stored by using the get current directory method and created folder name variable. We have to check if the file has a length greater than zero. And if it has, we extract the name of the file by using the file name property from the content disposition header value class. Additionally, we provide a full path on the server to store our file and the path to the database. In the using block, we create the stream variable of type file stream and use the copy to method to copy the content of the uploaded file to a target stream. As soon as we store the uploaded file on a required location, we return a database path as a result of this action. If the condition is not fulfilled, we just return a bad request. To prevent the multi-part body length error, we are going to modify the configuration in the startup CS class. Let's call the configure method with the form options type and populate the value length limit property, the multi-part body length limit property and memory buffer threshold property to the max value. And that's all, we can move on now. Usually, all the files in the www root folder are servable for the client applications. We provide that by adding app use static files in the startup class in the configure method. Of course, our uploaded images will be stored in the resources folder and due to that, we need to make it servable as well. To do that, Let's additionally modify the configure method in the startup CS class. We call the use static files method, but with the parameter of type static file options, where we populate the file provider property with the new physical file provider value, which provides a path to the resources folder, and the request path with the new path string object. And that's all it takes. We have prepared our server side application. And it's time to jump right to the client side code. Let's open the Upload Files Client project, install required packages, and take a look at the app component files. For the sake of simplicity, we have implemented all of our logic inside the app component. To learn in great detail about Angular project development, you can read the Angular tutorial on our blog site.
The link is in the description. So, let's start by creating a new upload component to handle all the upload related logic. This creates three files in the upload folder and we're gonna modify the upload component.ts file first. Let's create the message property to show the message when the upload action is finished and the progress property to show the upload progress. We require one additional property on upload finished to act as our event emitter. Of course, we need the HTTP variable to access our server endpoints. Then let's create the upload file function where we check if there's any file in the files parameter. And if there isn't, we just exit the function. Otherwise, we extract a file from the files parameter, create a form data object and append our file that we want to upload. After that, let's create a POST request with the URL, body and a single JSON object which states that we want to track changes of our HTTP request progress. In the subscribe part, as long as the upload is in progress, we update the progress variable and show that percentage on the screen. But as soon as the upload is finished, we're gonna write a message on the screen and emit a new event by using our event emitter. This event contains the body of our response, which is simply the database path of our uploaded file. We need that path to display the uploaded image with other user details. To display all of the mentioned functionalities on the screen, we need to modify the upload component.html file. Let's create a div as a wrapper for our elements on the page. In the second div, we add an input type file with the placeholder, change event, and style to hide it. Then we use the button with a click event that references to the file controller with the hashtag file reference variable. Basically, as soon as we click our button, it will simulate the click event from the file control. Below, we create a progress placeholder with a simple interpolation as well as the message placeholder. Then let's modify the upload component.css file by adding the font weight, the color, the margin and the line height attributes. And finally, add a selector from the upload component to the app component.html file. Excellent, we can inspect our result. Let's start the server application. Then let's do the same with the client. After application starts, we're gonna click the upload button, select a file, and we can see it's uploaded. We can check our images folder as well to be sure that the file is really uploaded. Of course, this is a small file and we see the 100% notification right away. But we can try uploading a bigger file and we're gonna see the counter incrementing for sure. Now let's add the credentials and press the create button on our form and we can see our newly created user. But its profile picture is not rendered, so let's fix that. First, we need to react to the on upload finished event from the update component. And to do that, let's modify the app component.html file. By doing this, we have to modify the app component.ts file as well. First, let's add an additional response property. Then, let's add the upload finished function to populate this property. With this modification, we have the response object in which we can find a path to be saved in the database. Lastly, 
we have to modify the user object in the onCreate function by adding the image path property. Great job! Now we know the image file path related to the created user. So let's use that knowledge to render that picture next to the other user details. To do that, let's change a table inside the app component.html file. We add an additional column header and populate the cell with the image tag where we call the create image path function to retrieve the path of the image. Finally, let's modify the app component.ts file by adding the create image path function. Now, let's create a new user and upload a new picture as well. As soon as we click the create button, we're gonna see the user details with the profile picture. Excellent, we did a great job here. So, that's all for this video. Of course, we can modify this code to upload multiple files as well. To learn how to do that, you can visit our article on the Codemaze blog site. As we said, you can find the link in the video's description. If you like this video, we would highly appreciate it if you hit those like and subscribe buttons down there. Of course, don't forget to visit the Codemaze blog to download the source code. If you like what you see, you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. So stay tuned and we see you again in another video. Until then, all the best.